welcome back to yet another epic comparison between two medium-sized jets, the A330neo versus the 787 Dreamliner. A re-engined version of the best-selling white body in history is going head-to-head -head with the brand new white body. But which is best? Before we examine this question, some quick background context. In the 1990s, Airbus was dominating this medium-sized widebody market with their hugely popular and successful A330, though Boeing wasn't gonna let that stay. Secretly, they were planning a brand new widebody, one that was more capable and efficient than the A330, allowing airlines to open up all new untested markets never possible before. In 2003, they finally revealed their new clean sheet white body to the market, the new 7E7, all now known as the 787 Dreamliner. Boeing targeted for their new clean sheet airplane to burn 30% less fuel than A330, thanks in part to its lighter composite airframe, new next generation engines, and more advanced aerodynamics. Needless to say, this fuel burn advantage coupled with high oil prices at the time, airlines turned to Airbus for their competing product. Initially, Airbus dismissed the 787 as a reaction to their A330 and didn't plan to launch anything brand new, just a simple upgrade of their existing A330. However, this received negative feedback, forcing Airbus to do a more substantial redesign, bringing their competing product closer to Boeing 787. However, this redesign, formerly known as a first-generation A350, still shared the same metal fuselage as A330 with the same narrower cross-section when compared to the new 787. Eventually, as orders for Airbus's competing product pale in comparison to Boeing's, Airbus launched their brand new extra-wide body A350, with the smallest Dash 800 variant targeted at the long-range 787-9. However, it became clear that the A350 was closer in size to Boeing's 777, and that a smallest variant of A350 wouldn't be optimized in seats and trip costs to compete with the 787 due to its heavy airframe with excessive range capability. At the time, Airbus had just launched the development of another new program, the A320neo. By re-engineering the aircraft, they extracted fuel-saving benefits on par with brand new aircraft. Judging by the success the new program had on the A320, bringing the proven airframe to new levels of efficiency on par with new aircraft, one of Airbus's largest A330 customers at the time, AirAsia X, started to prompt Airbus into re-engineering the A330. Airbus was however skeptical, stating that a lower purchase price, maintenance costs, navigation charges of the existing A330 gave it economics on par with the 787. However, as the A350 was clearly chasing after the large white body market, Airbus needed to offer a fuel efficient twin to compete in the medium sized sector. And finally, in 2014, Airbus launched their late response in the medium sized white body category, the new A330 Neo. an airplane that was perfectly matched in size to compete with Boeing 787. The launch of the A330neo meant the end of the small A350-800 initially intended to compete with 787. You can learn more about why the A330neo killed off the A350-800 by checking out an earlier non-voiceover video appearing in the pop-out banner now. Also, do stay tuned for more great epic comparisons and detailed aviation analysis coming weekly. If you are interested in the latest updates in the aviation industry, do check out the Airplane Productions Instagram page, the new and future home for all future aviation news updates. As ever, a link is dropped in the description below. So, here we are then, the A330neo versus Boeing 787. Which is best? Well, cue the music and let's find out.
Starting with performance, both aircraft are equally matched. When comparing the smaller variants of both, the Dash 800 Neo against the 787-8, the A330 Neo outperforms its Dash 8 competition. A330-800 Neo flies to a distance of 8,150 nautical miles while carrying 257 passengers in a typical three-class layout. While 787-8 flies to a distance of 7,355 nautical miles while carrying 242 passengers in a two-class layout. When comparing the larger variants from both, things are reversed. The A330-900 Neo carries 310 passengers in a two-class layout, slightly more than the 787-9's 296 passenger seating capacity but falls short in range with a maximum range of 7,200 nautical miles compared to 7,655 nautical miles for the 787-9. Moving on to engines, both feature the latest generation of fuel-efficient engines. The A330 Neo is powered by two Rolls-Royce Trent 7000 engines, which combines technology from the Trent XWB on A350 and Trent 1000-10 powering the 787. The new engines under the A330 Neo's wing produce up to 72,000 pounds of thrust each. The 787-9 is powered by two engine choices, either the GENX or Rolls-Royce Trent 1000-10 engine, the most powerful of which producing 71,000 pounds of thrust. However, what matters isn't the thrust performance of these new engines on these new aircraft, but rather the fuel consumption. Bringing us on to efficiency, both offer similar trip and seat costs on a cash operating cost basis, though things are turned when comparing direct operating costs. The 787 does have a slight 4% fuel burn advantage on a per seat calculation, with a cost per seat mile of 0.053 USD compared to 0.055 USD when comparing the larger and more efficient variants of the aircraft families. However, should lower capital costs promoted by Airbus be factored in, the A330 Neo would have superior direct operating costs. Furthermore, thanks to its shared fuselage with the A330CO, much of the airframe parts are common, securing lower maintenance costs for airlines. All in all, the 787 has better fuel burn performance, especially on longer routes, thanks to its clean sheet design, while the A330neo offers lower costs overall on shorter to medium range routes. Moving on to cabins, both feature new cabins showcasing each company's cabin design philosophy. The A330 Neo has the airspace cabin found on A350, while the 787 was the first to feature Boeing Sky interior. All in all, both have good cabins. The 787 has a larger and more spacious feeling cabin with higher ceilings, curved overhead bins, and larger windows with a special electronic shading system allowing for a light and airy feel. While some dislike these windows, I love them as it allows one to look out of the window even when it is totally dark without getting dazzled by the sun. Thanks to its stronger carbon composite fuselage, the aircraft can withstand higher cabin pressurization with higher cabin pressure at 6,000 feet and more moist air, making it easier for passengers to breathe. 787 was also the first commercial passenger airplane to receive a full-color LED cabin as standard, though times have moved on since then, and Airbus's A330neo does also feature LED mood lighting. It also has welcome lighting and larger overhead bins than the 787. While it is the older aircraft, it does have a quieter cabin, 
equipment compared to the 787, though does not benefit from lower cabin altitude or moist air. A330neo also has smaller windows, while the lower ceilings gives it a less spacious view. However, in terms of actual space for each passenger, it offers more than the 787. Thanks to its much-loved Aetherbrest 242 configuration, the aircraft features 18-inch wide seats compared to 17.5 inches on the 787. All in all, the A330neo and 787 cabins have their positives and negatives. Moving on to advantages and disadvantages, the A330neo is based on the hugely successful A330 family. Thus, pilots and crew do not have to be retrained onto a brand new aircraft type, while maintenance costs are also lower. However, while it can compete with 787 over medium-haul routes, the new 787 is simply more efficient over longer ones. As an example, the 787 has a higher cruise speed of Mach 0.85 compared to Mach 0.82 of the A330neo. It also has a newer cabin and better air on board. However, the new technologies also increase potential maintenance choke points and maintenance costs, while there is a long queue before airlines can start taking delivery of their new 787 airplanes. Commonality with other Boeing variants are also poor, though the new technologies of the aircraft does make it one of the most efficient, especially when flying long range. In terms of orders, well, it isn't exactly a very fair comparison to compare both of these specific variants. Given that both aircraft launch dates vastly vary, the 787 has sold for 16 years, compared to just 5 for the A330neo. Also, when comparing the total orders including the CEO, an airplane which also competes with 787, Airbus actually pulls ahead in the order race, with the A330 family as a whole receiving 1,718 orders, though the new NEO variants themselves have only received 299 orders. The 787-8 and 9 which compete have received an impressive 1,294 orders. All in all, when comparing the newer variants, the new 787 seems to attract more new orders from more new customers. So then, which of these new mid-size white bodies is best? Well, it is really close between the two. The A330neo is a great aircraft, with fuel efficiencies capable of matching brand new aircraft over most missions today. It also features performances on par with today's 787 while offering lower maintenance costs. However, while Airbus promotes lower acquisition costs, the list prices for both tell a different story. With the 787 list price matching or even cutting below A330neo's list price, If offered for similar prices, there is no comparison to be had. Going into the future, with its higher range, flexibility, and brand new design that has further growth potential, the 787 is the more capable, more efficient mid-size body twin, making the additional risks and costs easy to justify. Do you agree with this verdict? And if you don't, why so? comment below. Thanks for watching to the end of yet another epic comparison, until we meet in the next one, wishing you, as well as everyone, a truly clear sky hit.